Knowing how to properly price your work is one of the most important things you can possibly do if you're looking to get into selling your woodworking projects. Without a proper pricing structure in place, you could easily be missing out on valuable money, or even worse, actually losing money. My name is Eric Spensley, and today I'm gonna to show you how to properly price all of your projects so that you get paid what you deserve on Spensley Design Co. The first question that you probably have is, how do I know that some random guy on the internet knows anything about pricing? And that is a great question. I've been running my woodworking business for a little bit over two years now, and I've had plenty of success selling both small items in bulk, as well as large custom commissions. Regardless of what the product is, I've developed a pricing model that ensures that I, one, cover all my material costs, two, make a reasonable wage for my time, and three, all the miscellaneous expenses such as fuel for my car, utilities, travel, wear and tear on tools, and everything else that goes into running a business so that I actually make a profit. Not to mention that part of my responsibilities in my day job as an engineer requires me to run an in-depth model to accurately price out all the services that we offer. I'm obviously not able to share a lot of details about that, but a lot of the accounts that I'm in charge of pricing out are well in excess of $21.2 million. Woo! 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 Ow! Love that money! So, pricing those accurately is kind of important. And to make this entire process even easier, I'm gonna upload the exact model that I personally use for my business to my website so that you can download it and use it for your business. That's linked down in the description below and it'll walk you step-by-step step through this whole process and do all of the math for you. Just open it up in Google Sheets, Excel, or whatever spreadsheet software you like to use and you're all set. But before I jump into the model that I personally use, I wanna to touch on one of the most common ways to price things and why it might not be a great idea. If you search how to price my woodworking projects or something like that on Google, one of the most common answers that you're gonna find is simply taking the cost of your materials and doubling it. So if you use $100 worth of lumber for a project, all you do is double it to $200 and that's what you should charge. Easy, right? Well, not so fast. That would mean that you charge $200 for the project, spent $100 on material, so your profit would be $100. Let's say that that project took you 10 hours to make. That means you've effectively made $10 an hour. Not to mention all the other costs that you didn't factor in, like time to deliver the project to the client, time spent designing the project with the client, time spent getting all your materials from the lumber yard, fuel for your car, utilities, and so on. Now, yes, there are some times where that cost of materials times two method works pretty well. But the pricing model that I'm gonna share with you today ensures that your price works every single time and you never have to second guess it. So let's jump into it. The very first thing that you need to know is how long the project's gonna take. If a client asks you to build a coffee table, count all of the hours that would go into making it and come up with a reasonable estimation. One word of advice, especially when you're getting started out, is that however long you think the project's gonna take, it's gonna take longer. If you are brand new to building stuff and you think that you can build a coffee table in about 10 hours, go ahead and double it to 20 hours. That's because you're likely unaware how quickly time adds up. Think of tasks like sanding, finishing, driving to the lumber yard, and everything else that goes into the project, and those hours add up fast. All of those small tasks cost you your time and you wanna get paid for that, right? If you've been building stuff fairly regularly and you're pretty confident about how long it's going to take you to build that coffee table, for example, 10 hours, go ahead and add about 10 to 20% buffer on top, so 11 to 12 hours. Hold up, future Eric here. I know that people are gonna get spun up on that last part. Any denomination of time that you wanna get paid by, whether it's seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, we'll work here. Whatever time structure you wish to be paid by, just multiply that times your rate. <laughs> I knew that there was gonna be some angry person in the comments that lost their mind over that one, so I wanted to address it. Next, you need to know how much you wanna get paid per hour. 
A pretty typical rate for woodworking would be somewhere around $25 to $100 an hour, but that's 100% up to you to decide. There's gonna be a lot of considerations to take into mind, like where you live, your skill level, and everything like that. So for the sake of this example, let's say we're gonna make $50 an hour. So now that we know the total amount of time it's going to take you to build that coffee table, 12 hours, which is 10 hours, plus that 10 to 20% buffer, and we know how much you wanna make per hour, $50 an hour, we can calculate your total labor costs. $50 an hour times 12 total hours comes out to $600 in labor cost. Does all that math make your head spin? Maybe it's time to relax a little bit and watch some TV. And thankfully, the big game is finally here. Some people go to these big parties for the little finger sandwiches or the little cute cocktail weenies, and other people there for that disgusting French onion dip but only those in the know are there for the real action. Action that can only be found on DraftKings Sportsbook. All new customers have to do is sign up for DraftKings using my promo code SPENSELY, bet at least $5 on the big game, and you'll instantly receive an additional $200 in bonus bets. Yup, that's right. New customers bet $5 on the big game and instantly get $200 deposited into your account. Wondering what you could use $200 in bonus bets on? Try out Same Game Parlays, where you can combine multiple bets in one game, like which team will have the most passing yards and who will score the first touchdown of the night for even bigger winnings. If mobile sports betting is not yet available in your state, don't worry. You can still get in on the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy. DraftKings has so many ways to make watching sports more fun, so download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers can use promo code SPENSELY, bet $5 on the big game, and instantly get $200 in additional bets. Again, that's promo code SPENSELY only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Now, let's get back to the video. And now that you know the cost of the labor or all the work that went in the project, you also need to know the cost of all your materials or supplies. Think of everything that goes into the project. What lumber are you using? What finish are you using? Do you have hardware such as drawer slides or hinges? Do you have to order prefabricated pieces such as custom metal bases? Do you have to buy a special router bit to get that perfect edge profile? All of those things should be accounted for. So for this coffee table example, let's say that you need the following. 20 board feet of eight quarter walnut at $15 a board foot or $300. 20 board feet of four quarter walnut at $11 a board foot or $220, two drawer slides at $35 a pair, and about one eighth of a can of finish at $64 a can or $8. That comes to a grand total of $563 in materials. Now, if you really wanted to, you could go into absolutely every detail about every brad nail, every screw, every ounce of glue that you use on a project, but to be honest with you, it's really not necessary. It's typically not going to affect your price very much, and I'll actually show you where to cover those costs later. However, if you do use 10 boxes of screws on a project, you're probably gonna wanna include that cost. But if it's four screws, yeah, don't worry about it. So now that you know your total labor cost, $600, and your total material cost, $563, that tells you that your total costs are $1163. That's the price that you should be charging for this coffee table, right? Well, no, you're not done quite yet. If you remember from before, I mentioned that I need a way to cover all those miscellaneous business expenses, things like taxes, insurance, utilities, fuel for my car, wear and tear on my tools. That way I actually make a profit and grow as a business. And that's where the concept of markup, margin, or profit margin comes in. In order for you to actually make money and grow as a business, you need to be bringing in a profit margin. A typical profit margin lands anywhere from right about 15% on the low side to about 35% on the high side. This is something that you are personally gonna to have to play around with and adjust a little bit, but a 25% margin is a great place to start. So if our total cost for that table were 1163, and we wanted to make a 25% margin on that, you would take 1163 and divide it by 100% minus your profit margin, 25%. What that's basically saying is that 1163 represents 75% of the price that I wanna get for the table. So I need to solve for what 100% of that price would be. 
that comes out to $15.50, which is the final price that you should be charging for that coffee table. Now, if all that math seems a little bit complicated, I put the exact model that I personally use for my business up on my website that you can download and it'll do all of the calculations for you. Just open it up in Excel, Google Sheets, or whatever spreadsheet software that you like to use and you're all set. Now, if you were doing something like making 10 cutting boards, this pricing model also works great for that too. Just change the number of items you're making to 10 and it automatically spits out at the bottom the price that you should be charging for each cutting board. Now, this pricing model needs to be taken for what it is, a model. Real quick, if you made it this far in the video and just wanna support everything I'm doing here, leave a comment down below that says, Michigan's that extra engagement is a massive boost to get my channel and this video out to even more people so that they can get help with their business. And if you would like to support even more, consider picking up a hat or a t-shirt from my online store, but let's get back to the video. So like I said earlier, this is just a model. It should not be a concrete price that you never deviate from. If you were to take that exact coffee table from before, and instead of it taking you about 12 hours to build, it was gonna take you 75 hours to build because you're pretty new and just kind of slow at building stuff, no one's gonna pay nearly $5,800 for that table. However, if you're making heirloom quality furniture that takes a really long time and is highly detailed and very, very good quality, $6,000 isn't necessarily out of the question for something like that. Just be aware that you still need to take in consideration the current market pricing for the item that you're looking to sell. If you use this model and it tells you that the cutting board that you're looking to sell should be right around $3,000 selling price, however, every other comparable cutting board is right around 200 bucks, it tells you a couple things. One, you need to spend less time on making that cutting board or perhaps make multiple cutting boards at the same time. Can you glue up five boards at once? Could you utilize a machine like a planer instead of a hand planer to save some time? Two, use less expensive materials so that your material cost is lower. Instead of using super exotic species that are 30 to $50 a board foot, could you get away with using some slightly cheaper but still nice materials like walnut or maple? And three, Maybe this just isn't a market that you can compete in and you should look at selling a different product. There are definitely certain products that you just can't compete with if you don't have the right tools or skills. For example, I don't own a CNC. So if I were to get a commission for a custom sign, not only would it take me absolutely forever to make, but it would look awful. That's simply a product market that I just can't compete with at this time. You put a ton of effort into all the products that you make and you deserve to be paid appropriately and appropriately is not below minimum wage. You possess a skill that the general public does not and you're very good at what you do. Use this pricing model to be confident that you are pricing all of your stuff in a way that actually covers all of your costs and is going to get you to grow as a business. And if someone's absolutely beating you up on price, I can tell you from my experience, that's not the only thing they're gonna be a complete nightmare about. Just cut them loose now and save yourself the headache. One of my best suggestions to weed out problematic clients from the very beginning is to ask for a budget up front. This ensures that you're both on the exact same page and don't spend hours and hours going back and forth trying to select the perfect wood, the perfect color, the perfect size, designing all these intricate details only to find that they want a 12 foot dining table for $100. <laughs> Yes, it does feel awkward and you might think it's rude to ask, but if anyone is actually serious about buying something from you, they won't mind having that conversation. Again, I'm putting my pricing spreadsheet on my website and I'll link that down in the description below for you to download. 